In this section, we're going to be going over the substitution rule. So for most of the integrals that we've been evaluating, uh, they've been relatively straightforward, and we were able to find the antiderivative just by looking at it and knowing the rules and formulas for finding antiderivatives. But our anti-differentiation formulas are not always going to be able to help us. So for example, if we have this, uh, this integral right here, the integral of 2x times the square root of 1 plus x squared dx, we cannot just simply say that this has some antiderivative that we were supposed to have memorized and get an answer easily. So to find this integral, what we're going to have to do is actually utilize a change of variable. So we're going to be changing the variable from the x's that are in here, we're going to be changing it from x to a new variable u. So for this particular example, we're going to let u equal 1 plus x squared. Notice 1 plus x squared is what's inside of that square root. If we take the derivative of u with respect to x now, we would end up getting du dx equals 2x. Right, The derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of x squared is 2x, so du dx equals 2x. If we solve for du, multiply dx to the right, we end up getting du equals 2x times dx. So right now you're probably like, well that's kind of a lot of, uh, a lot of things that doesn't seem like it helps very much, but let's go ahead and actually do this based on what they just told us here. So we are doing the integral of 2x times the square root of 1 plus x squared dx. We were told, which we won't always be told, to let u equal 1 plus x squared. And then we ended up getting du equals 2x times dx. Right, we took the derivative, got du dx equals 2x, and then I skipped writing this step, and I just skipped right to du, du equals 2x dx. So the whole point here is 2x dx, that's actually right here, right? So let's go ahead and rewrite this integral in terms of u instead of x. So it's going to be the integral. So let's take a look at this part first the square root of 1 plus x squared, but 1 plus x squared equals u. So we're going to replace that with the square root of u, and now we're going to replace 2x dx with du, because that's what that equals. So it's going to be the integral of radical u du. So now what we're going to do is evaluate this integral with respect to u instead of x, so we can rewrite it as u to the one half. And then now we know that we have to add one to the exponent and then divide by that exponent. So we're going to add one, one half plus one is three halves, divide by that new exponent. And then we're always gonna have a plus c because it's an indefinite integral. And let's go ahead and instead of dividing by three over two, let's multiply by two over three. And instead of u, we don't want u in here anymore, right? We want it in terms of the original. So instead of u, we're going to rewrite it as 1 plus x squared, because that's what we let u equal. So it's going to be 1 plus x squared to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, so that one is actually solved, and we are done. Okay, that was just kind of going over an example before we actually went over kind of the procedure for it. So let's take a look more formally now. So in general, this method is going to work when we have an integral that we can write in this form right here, where it's the integral of a function within a function, and then the inside function also has its derivative present. So what you should be doing when you see an integral, first you should hope that all you have to do is simply find the antiderivative using some of our formulas and some of our antiderivative rules. If not, it might be u substitution. 
So that's also what we call it, uh, the substitution rule. We can also call it u substitution or u sub. So what you should do is you should ask yourself, is there a function as your integrand and is its derivative also part of the integrand but the, it could be off by a multiple uh, constant multiple okay so let's go ahead and see an example so here's just the general definition here so like we said if we have a function within a function and then the inner function also has its derivative then we can replace it using u substitution so let's go ahead and see this first example. We have find the integral of x cubed times cosine x to the fourth plus two dx. So we should say to ourselves that there's, we definitely don't have some antiderivative formula that we have memorized for this big function here. So maybe it's u sub. And notice that we have this inner function x to the fourth plus two. And if we think ahead using power rule, if we take the derivative of this, it's going to look like this x cubed out here. So let's go ahead and let u equal x to the fourth plus two. And now we take the derivative. So we do du dx equals power rule four x cubed, the derivative of two is zero. So this step right here, we do not have to actually write this step. Multiply the dx over to the right hand side right away and then we can just rewrite it like this. du equals 4x cubed dx. So don't forget these differentials, like make sure you have it set up exactly the way I have it set up right here. Uh, it's very important. So let's go ahead and take a look at the original again. So the original we have this taken care of, the x to the fourth plus two, because that'll just be u. But something that we have to take into account is this x cubed. This does not say x cubed, right? That says four x cubed. What we have to do is divide both sides by four. And then when we do that, we get du over four equals x cubed dx. The reason for that is because now we have x cubed dx right here. So we're going to end up replacing that with du over 4. So let's go ahead and rewrite the integral. So we're going to rewrite the integral as instead of cosine of x to the fourth plus 2, it's cosine of u. And then instead of, instead of x cubed dx, that's going to be du over 4. So we should never have an integral with both with two different uh, variables in it when we're doing this variable change method. Okay, so let's go ahead and rewrite this. du over 4, I'm going to pull out that 1 fourth because it's a constant. 1 fourth times the integral of cosine u du. Okay, now it's looking good and we can integrate. So integrating this, the integral of cosine is just sine. So it's gonna be sine of u plus our c, of course. And now we're gonna replace u with what we let it originally equal, which is x to the fourth plus two. So this will be one fourth sine of x to the fourth plus two plus c and we are done. As usual, we could take the derivative of this to uh, make sure it ends up equaling what we started with. Okay, next one, we want to evaluate the square root of 2x plus 1 dx. So for this one, there's really not too much going on, right? We just have this singular function uh, under the square root. So notice that if we let u equal 2x plus 1, you're typically going to let u equal some sort of inner function, but that's not always the case, as we will see. So we let u equals 2x plus 1. The derivative of this will equal 2. So that will be 
du equals 2 dx. Kind of a, a tip for this too is that uh, if you have a linear term, 2x plus 1 is linear. If you let u equal a linear term, the derivative will not have a variable in it because the derivative of a linear term will be a constant. Okay, so what we're going to have to replace is just dx. So in order to get dx by itself, we have to divide both sides by 2. And we get du over 2 equals dx. And then once we have that over there on the side, we can go ahead and rewrite this in terms of u. So instead of the square root of 2x plus 1, that's the square root of u. And then instead of dx, we have du over 2. So let's go ahead and take that 1 half and bring it out front because it's a constant. Let's rewrite the square root as an exponent of 1 half. And let's go ahead and integrate. So integrating this u to the 1 half, we add 1 to the exponent divide by that new exponent plus c and now let's go ahead and change it from dividing by 3 over 2 to multiplying by 2 over 3 and now we can see that these 2's cancel 2 divided by 2 is 1 so we are left with 1 third Instead of u, we're going to replace u again with 2x plus 1. So 1 third times 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, so that is it for that one. So if you see a function in here and it looks like there is nothing else, just the kind of the function within a function, but it's a linear term inside of it, then if you let u equal it, that whatever is inside, then it'll end up giving you just a constant that you have to uh, bring along with you when you're changing the variable. Okay, let's see another one here. Let's find the integral of x over the square root of 1 minus 4x squared dx. So once again, we say we obviously don't have some um, antiderivative formula that we should know. So notice that we have this 1 minus 4x squared right here. If we take the derivative, the derivative of 4x squared will give us 8x. So 8x off by a constant multiple of x will, be, uh, will work for us. So u is going to equal 1 minus 4x squared. So let's say, uh, let's say we accidentally... Um, just let u equal 4x squared. Anytime you have a constant being added or subtracted, like this 1 out front, you should typically bring that with you when you're doing this u sub, because when you take the derivative, it's just going to be 0. If you let u only be 4x squared, we would get du equals 8x dx. This would end up getting very messy and not working, we would divide both sides by 8. We would replace the x dx with du over 8. We would get 1 over the square root of 1 minus u, du over 8. And then we still have this right here, which is not going to help us very much. So let's go ahead and scratch that. And like we originally had, let u equal this whole thing, 1 minus 4x squared, because when we take the derivative, we get negative 8x dx. And then notice that we need to replace the x dx, so divide both sides by that negative 8. And when we do that, we get du over negative 8 equals x dx. And let's go ahead and make some replacements. So it's going to be the integral. Uh, instead of x dx, we're going to have du over negative 8, but I'll take care of that at the end. Uh, we're going to have 1 
over the square root of u. So the square root of u. And then instead of x dx, we now have du over negative 8. So we're going to go ahead and factor out that negative 1 eighth out front. And 1 over the square root of u is u to the negative 1 half. So we, we're good to go. Now we can actually find the antiderivative by adding 1 to the exponent. Negative 1 half plus 1 gives us positive 1 half. Divide by 1 half plus c. And then a few more steps here. Um, instead of dividing by 1 half, we can multiply by 2. If we multiply by 2, negative 1 eighth times 2 will give us negative 1 fourth. Instead of u, we're going to replace u with 1 minus 4x squared. So 1 minus 4x squared to the 1 half and then plus c. And if you want to, you can rewrite the 1 half exponent using the square root, but it really does not matter. Okay, so that is it for that one. Next one, we have evaluate the integral of e to the 5x dx. Hopefully we remember that the integral of e to the x dx is just e to the x. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this one. So there's really not much to let u equal, right? We have the integral of e to the 5x. If we let u equal 5x, we end up getting du equals 5 dx, right? The integral of 5x is 5, and this kind of comes into play like the one two pages ago, I think, um, where we let u equal a linear term because now the derivative is a constant. So all we have to replace here is the dx, divide both sides by 5, and we end up getting du over 5 equals dx. So let's make our replacements. We get the integral of e to the 5x becomes e to the u, and then dx becomes du over 5, we pull out the 1 over 5, and now we're doing the integral of e to the u du, and now it becomes a lot easier, right? We have the integral of e to the u, which is e to the u, plus c, replace the u with 5x, and then we're going to be done. So 1 fifth e to the 5x plus c. So in general, something that you should kind of just know off the top of your head, if you are integrating, if you are integrating e to the kx, where k is a constant, the answer is going to end up being 1 over k e to the kx plus c. Okay, so that's just kind of a nice shortcut uh, if you see something like that. Okay, next one, we want to find the integral of tangent of x dx. It's a little bit tricky because you try to start letting u equal something, and there's only one thing to let u equal, and that's tangent of x. If you let u equal the tangent of x, du would equal secant squared dx. There's nothing there that's going to help us make any replacements, so we need to rewrite the tangent of x using the quotient identity. So we're going to rewrite the tangent of x as sine of x over cosine of x. And like I mentioned in previous uh, lecture videos, uh, typically a lot of the times with trigonometric functions we're going to have to use some form of identity to rewrite it. Uh, so let's take a look at this now. So now we have two things that we could let u equal. We can either let u equal sine of x or u equal cosine of x. Let's let u equal cosine of x. And 
if you tried to let u equal sine of x, I recommend you trying to do that. It actually would not work out. Um, so recommend trying that. So for this one, we let u equals cosine of x. We take the derivative. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So it's du equals negative sine x dx. And we see what we need to replace. We already have cosine as our u. So we need to replace sine of x dx because they have our x's in them. So we need to essentially just negate both sides to get sine of x dx by itself on the right. So we get negative du equals sine x dx. And now we can go ahead and make our replacements. So it's going to be the integral of, uh, instead of cosine of x, we have u. So it's going to be 1 over u. And then instead of sine x dx, we have negative du. So we're going to bring out the negative 1 out front. It's going to be negative integral of 1 over u du. And we have to remember that the integral of 1 over u du gives us the ln of the absolute value of u. So we get negative ln absolute value of u plus c. We go ahead and plug back in our cosine of x into u. We get negative ln absolute value cosine x plus c. So this is the integral of tangent of x, which does not seem obvious at all. Um, so you have to know how to do the u substitution for it. Okay, so next one. So before we do this next example, let me just mention um, some of the important steps here for u substitution. So these are our generic uh, kind of u substitution steps for indefinite integrals, which we were just doing. We need to let u equal uh, some function in our integrand, and then we need to find du, which is the derivative uh, of g of x, dx. Then we need to make necessary substitutions. So that's going from an integral with only x's in it to an integral with only u's in it. Then we need to integrate with respect to u. And then when we we're done integrating, substitute back in for u so we have our x's back. So let's take a look at this next one, a little bit more complicated. Let's find the integral of x to the fifth times the square root of 1 plus x squared dx. So we may be thinking, just based on what we've been doing, let's let u equal that inner function, that 1 plus x squared. And if we try to take the derivative, we would get du equals 2x dx. So then this is the problem, right? The x to the fifth. There's no x to the fifth in what we just found, but what we could actually do, which is the tricky part for this one, is we can rewrite x to the fifth as x times x to the fourth, right? x times x to the fourth is x to the fifth, so that's not changing anything. When you recognize to do that, that makes this just a little bit easier. And the reason is because now we can take care of this x and this x to the fourth separately. Let's take a look at this x first, x and dx. From that, we can take a look at this one, divide both sides by 2. du over 2 equals uh, x dx. Right, so that takes care of, here's the x dx right there and there. So we're going to be replacing that with a du over 2. So now the question becomes, how do we take care of this x to the fourth and rewrite it in terms of u? That is actually going to come from right up here. So that's the tricky part. Let's go ahead and solve this for x squared. If we solve this for x squared, subtract 1 on both sides, we get x squared equals u minus 1. So that almost helps us, except we need x to the fourth, not x squared. To get x to the fourth, 
all we have to do is square both sides. So squaring both sides will give us x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. u minus 1 squared is just going to be u minus 1 squared. So now we're actually all set to make our substitution. We have our x dx, our x dx. We have our x to the fourth, x to the fourth, and then of course our 1 plus x squared. We can rewrite all of these in terms of u. So instead of x dx, it's going to be du over 2. I'll write that at the end. Uh, instead of x to the fourth, we have u minus 1 squared. Instead of the square root of 1 plus x, we have the square root of u. And then, like I mentioned, instead of x dx, we have du over 2. Okay, so pretty tricky for that one, and now it still looks a little tricky because we can't just go ahead and find the antiderivative of this. What we're going to do is expand this out, uh, so FOIL it out, u minus 1 times u minus 1. At the same time, let's bring the 1 half out front. So that's going to be radical u times FOIL out the u minus 1 times u minus 1. That would give you u squared minus 2u plus 1 du. And now what we could do is distribute the radical u. So remember that square root of u has an exponent of 1 half. So that's 1 half the integral. Square root, so u to the 1 half times u squared is going to be u to the should be 5 halves. So you add the exponents, minus 2, and now square root of u times u will be u to the 3 halves. Add the exponents, and then radical u times 1 is just square root of u, so just u to the 1 half. Okay, now we're all set to go, and now we can integrate it nice and easy. We're going to add 1 to each one of these exponents and divide by that new exponent. So it's going to be u to the 7 halves divided by 7 over 2 minus 2 times u add 1, 5 halves divide by 5 halves. And then u to the 1 half, we add 1 divide by that new exponent and all of this plus c. And now let's go ahead and rewrite everything. That's going to be 1 half. So instead of dividing by the fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So 2 sevenths times u to the 7 halves minus, uh, this will end up being 4 fifths because this 2 is already here. 4 fifths u to the 5 halves plus 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And let's rewrite this one more time by distributing the 1 half to all three of these terms. So distribute that 1 half and we're going to end up getting 1 seventh u to the 7 halves minus 4 divided by 2 will give us that 2 back. 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus one third u to the three halves plus c. And then finally, all we have to do is plug back in for u. So u was one plus x squared. So let's go ahead and plug that back in and we will be done with this one. So we get one seventh times one plus x squared to the seven halves minus two fifths one plus x squared to the five halves plus one third one plus x squared to the three halves plus c. Okay, so that is indefinite integrals using the substitution method. Now we're going to do definite integrals using the substitution method. So when we have definite integrals and we're doing the u sub method, there's actually two ways we could do it. 
the first way is going to be evaluate the indefinite in or the indefinite integral first and then use the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus so method one we want the integral of from zero to four so we have bounds we have our limits of integration because it's a definite integral uh, so the, inter the integral from zero to four of the square root of two x plus one dx so this method we actually already found this integral we would let u equal 2x plus 1, du equals 2 dx, and then we found that from this, uh, dx or du over 2 would equal dx. So this is the same one from several pages ago. So I'm just going to kind of skip to the answer. Well, actually, we'll just go through and do it real quick. When you're doing it this way with method one, what you do, so the reason why it says evaluate the indefinite integral, is we ignore the bounds for now. So ignoring the bounds, we end up getting the square root of u, and then it ends up being one half, that uh, du over two equals the dx. And then we integrate. So we integrate and we get u add one to the exponent, so u to the three halves over that three halves. And the thing is, we don't add a plus c, because now what we're going to do is we're going to replace this into the u. So it's gonna end up being one third, because after multiplying by two over three, the twos will cancel, one third 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves, so that's replacing the u. And now we bring the bounds back, evaluated from 0 to 4. Okay, so now we can evaluate and plug in the 4, upper bound minus lower bound. And something else that we can do that we didn't do before, I'm going to leave this 1 third factored out front, put parentheses there, and then plug in to here only. So plugging into there only will give us two times four plus one to the three halves. Now we plug in the zero, two times zero plus one to the three halves. And simplifying this, we would end up getting 26 over Okay, so that's method one. Method one is where we ignore the bounds and we evaluate the indefinite integral and then plug back in for x and then introduce the bounds again. Okay, so I just wrote the steps there a little bit more uh, formally. So what we're actually going to be doing is the second method because the second method is the preferred method. And the reason for this is because when we get more and more difficult ones, more and more difficult integrals, we're going to need to do it this method. So we might as well just start doing it this method all the time. So method two, this is going to be to change the limits of integration when the variable is changed. So let's go ahead and see what we mean. So same question, same integral that we just did. We're gonna let u equals u equal 2x plus 1. We already know that du is going to equal uh, 2 dx. Divide both sides by 2. du over 2 equals dx. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate. And we're going to perform our substitution here. And I'm going to bring that 1 half from the du over 2 out front and it becomes the integral of the square root of u du, so same thing as before, except now we're going to take these into account, the, the new bounds. So on the side, I'm gonna put change limits of integration. What we have to do is we use this right here. We use what we let u equal. So I'm gonna do it both for x equals zero and x equals four. 
So for x equals 0, we're going to use u equals 2 times x, which is 0, plus 1. So that becomes u equals 1. So our new lower bound in terms of u is going to be u equals 1. Next, for x equals 4, we do the same thing. u equals 2 times x plus 1, which gives us u equals 9. So now that we changed the limits of integration, we're going to replace the 0 with a 1 and the 4 with a 9. Now we have this equivalent integral and we never have to go back to x's. So it's going to be uh, when we integrate it. So we've integrated this a million times already. We get 1 third u to the 3 halves. We're evaluating this from 1 to 9. And now we can just do upper limit minus lower limit. I'm going to leave the 1 third out front. So that's 9 to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves. And 9 to the 3 halves, the square root of 9 is 3. And then we get 3 cubed is 27. So 27. And then 1 raised up to the 3 halves is 1. So we obviously get the same answer as before, 26 over 3. Okay, so once again, the important thing to remember here is we use whatever we let u equal to change our bounds. Okay, so this just kind of goes over a more formal definition of what we're actually doing. Uh, the, the important thing here being that definite integrals, we're going to be changing the bounds. Yeah, let's do a couple more examples. Let's evaluate the integral from 1 to 2 of dx over 3 minus 5x squared. So we'll go ahead and say it's going to be u substitution. We're going to let u equal 3 minus 5x because if we do the derivative, we get negative 5. So du equals negative 5 dx. And since that's a linear term, that's good because all we need to replace is dx. So we can divide both sides by negative 5 and get du over negative 5 equals dx. Now we make some substitutions. Before we do the substitutions, let's change the limits of integration. So we have to do it for both x equals 1 and x equals 2. So we go ahead and we use what we let u equal. So it's going to be 3 minus 5x, 3 minus 5 times 1. That's going to be negative 2. Oh, let me rewrite that as u equals u equals 3 minus 5 times 1, which gives us u equals negative 2. And then for the second one, u equals 3 minus 5 times 2, which gives us u equals 3 minus 10, u equals negative 7. So now we go ahead and do our substitution here. The lower bound becomes negative 2, the upper bound is negative 7. So notice that the larger number, so negative 2 is larger than negative 7, it's our lower bound. We don't flip them. Um, we do exactly what it said here. x equals negative 1 becomes negative 2. x equals 2 becomes u equals negative 7. Okay, so now we do our substitutions. Uh, we're going to have 1 over 3 minus 5x is u, so 1 over u squared. And then our dx becomes du over negative 5. So now everything's in terms of u, so let's go ahead and clean it up and then integrate. So let's bring the negative 1 fifth out front and perform the integral. Uh, 1 over u squared can be rewritten as u to the negative 2. 
du. So we go ahead and we add one to the exponent and divide by that new exponent. So we add one and we get u to the negative one, divide by that negative one. And let's just clean this up real quick. And let me put the bounds on here. And also I forgot to put the bounds on the one above it. So put the bounds on here. There we go. And clean this up before we plug in. Uh, bring out that negative one. So negative times a negative is positive. And we end up getting one fifth. Well, we can actually write this as one over five u because it's u to the negative one evaluated from negative two to negative seven. Let's go ahead and plug in our bounds. That's one over five times negative seven minus one over five times negative two. And that will end up simplifying to one over 14. Okay, let's do one more example uh, like this. So we want to evaluate the integral from 1 to e of ln of x over x dx. So a little bit tricky. We need to recognize that if we let u equal the ln of x, if we take the derivative, we get 1 over x. So we get du equals 1 over x dx. 1 over x dx is actually right here right, one over x dx, so that works out perfectly. And let's change the limits of integration. So we're changing it for x equals one and x equals e. And we are using this right here, what we let u equal. So we have u equals ln of x, u equals ln of one ln of 1 is 0, so that bound becomes u equals 0. Next one, we get u equals ln of e. ln of e is 1. So those are actually turn out to be very nice bounds. So 1 becomes 0, e becomes 1, and we replace ln of x with a u, and we replace 1 over x times dx with a du. Now it becomes one of the easiest possible integration questions you can get. We're going to add 1 to the exponent, divide by that exponent, evaluate from 0 to 1, and then we're going to plug in our bounds. We're going to plug in 1 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2. That ends up giving us 1 half. Okay, so if you recognize what to let u equal, um, these should go pretty smoothly. So the last thing we have here is symmetry. So sometimes the symmetry of a function will help us simplify an integral and make our uh, calculations a little bit easier for us. So the two types of symmetry we're going to be looking at are even and odd functions. If you remember, an even function is going to be a function that's a mirror image over the y-axis. So that means f of negative x equals f of x. An odd function is a function that is a 180 degree rotation of itself, and that means f of negative x equals negative f of x. So we can see here, this first function is an even function. It's a mirror image over the y-axis of itself. Function on the right is an odd function. It's a 180 degree rotation of itself. So the way that symmetry helps us, taking a look at the odd function, hopefully you agree, or taking a look at the even function, hopefully that you agree that the area to the left of the y-axis equals the area to the right of the y-axis. So all we have to do, instead of calculating this whole area, all we have to do is calculate half of it and then multiply that answer by 2. 
So instead of calculating negative a to a, we can calculate 0 to a and then multiply that answer by 2. Similar for an even, or rather an odd function, we have a shortcut. If it's an odd function, hopefully once again you agree that this area is the same as this area. The difference being that this area is below the x-axis, so it's negative. So that one's negative, that one's positive. Since they're the same, but one's negative and one's positive, they cancel each other off. And the integral from negative a to positive a will be 0. So if you recognize that, then it is a very nice shortcut. Let's see one example here. Let's uh, calculate the integral from negative 2 to 2 of x to the 6 plus 1 dx using symmetry. So y equals x to the 6 plus 1 is an even function. If you have to go back and review that, make sure you, you review that. It's an even function. So that means that our original integral is going to equal 2 times the integral shortened up a little bit. Instead of negative 2 to 2, we can just do 0 to 2 and multiply that answer by 2. So it helps because plugging in 0 tends to cancel things out and it makes calculations a lot easier. Also notice that these bounds have to be the same where one's negative and one's positive. Okay, so we go ahead and we uh, calculate 2 times the integral from 0 to 2, x to the 6 plus 1 dx, and we get add 1 to the exponent, divide by that exponent, the integral of 1 is x, evaluate this from 0 to 2, and I'm going to leave this 2 factored out front here, so we get 2 to the 7th over 7 plus 2 minus 0 to the 7th over 7 plus 0. Obviously this whole side right here is just 0. And we would end up getting, after we get common denominators, 284 over 7. So I recommend doing this integral the original way and just verifying that they're the same thing. Okay, so that is it for this section.